Hey guys, hope everybody's doing well out there. Uh, over the weekend, I put out a poll on my community tab asking which of two options you guys would prefer to see next uh, in or on the channel. Uh, the options were between Udu or Odoo and uh, Dozzle, which I guess are names of products that are out there that you can install on Docker. Uh, I will do videos on both of them. And originally I was really convinced that Dozzle was going to kind of take, uh, take the prize as far as uh, what was getting voted on for the next video. But right at the last minute, though, uh, Odoo or Udu, however you pronounce that, uh, actually ended up with the majority of the votes, uh, which was kind of surprising. But let's uh, jump over to my desktop and take a look at Udu and then how to install it. So here we are on my desktop. And basically, uh, this Odoo or Udu or whatever uh, is kind of an all-in-one uh, platform for uh, ERP and enterprise resource planning platform um, that is full of apps uh, that lets you do all kinds of stuff from CRMs, point of sales, uh, sales tracking, timesheets, inventory tracking, uh, marketing automation, email, like there's a ton of stuff in here. So uh, in fact, you know what, let's just click and many more uh, just to kind of give you an idea. Um, there's a ton of website apps, sales apps, finance, operations, manufacturing, human resources, communication, marketing, and then customization. We're not going to cover all of that. Basically, what I want to do is show you how to install this application in Docker, kind of run you through a couple of different things as far as setup is concerned uh, once it's actually installed. Uh, and we'll just kind of go from there. Again, there are just too many applications in here to go through all of them. Also, um, some of them are, are free. They're included. They're part of the open source platform. But uh, if we come up here to pricing... Uh, you'll, you'll find that there are some apps that do require an upgrade with a monthly service fee. Uh, so just know that uh, there, there's a lot of things you can do for free, but uh, if you decide that there are certain applications that you want, you may have to pay for some of those. So definitely check out uh, their pricing page uh, so you can get an idea of what's going on there. Uh, also, when you're in the back end of the application on your server, uh, you will be able to uh, actually see which ones need to be paid and which ones are included. Okay, so here is the hub.docker.com page. Um, and of course, there's a lot of really good information in here. Uh, I should also say that uh, if you look, take a look at the tags, uh, none of these are built for Raspberry Pi. Uh, this is all going to be uh, x86, x64 desktop style processors. Uh, ARM processors are not gonna be compatible uh, with this setup. Um, so if we jump over to the description page, uh, we can see that there are several supported uh, tags for different versions. Um, there's more information for quick reference uh, here. Uh, it used to be known as Open ERP, so that might be another thing that you may know this as uh, from the past. Um, but uh, it's it's gone under some some rebranding, um, and and so basically here we are. There are a few different ways that you can run this. Um, originally, when I started this, when I started looking into this application, uh, basically I just I started I ran uh, this in command line, and then I ran this in command line, and it just worked which is very cool. But of course, we don't always like to do things in command line uh, if we don't have to. So uh, I took some time and uh, came over and wrote up uh, uh, a Docker Compose or a stack. Uh, of course, it wasn't until uh, after the fact that I'd written all of this uh, that I took the time to scroll down a little further and uh, saw that they had already done all of that work for me. So um, what I can say, though, is uh, you can use any of the stacks available on hub.docker.com or you can use the stack that I created. They all work uh, basically the same way. I will have links to everything in the description down below so you can find the stack that fits you best. But I do want to talk about a couple of things in this stack here. First thing, version two, that's pretty standard. You could run this as version three if you wanted to, but version two is fine. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is run a database. Uh, it's going to be a, a Postgres database, version 10. Uh, we've got our username and our password. Uh, you should probably change those. Uh, those are just defaults that are in there. Uh, so definitely change those. But if you do, um, nope, I guess we don't actually have to do anything there. So change these if you want to. That's fine. I encourage it, actually. Uh, the database will be Postgres. Uh, the, the data will actually be uh, mapped here. Uh, and then we've also got a volume that maps it as well. Uh, I just wanted to have some redundancy there to make sure uh, that everything went where it was supposed to go. Uh, below that, we've actually got uh, the, the application image. We're pulling the latest version, which will be, I think, version 14. Uh, if we come back over to here. Um, so th this stack shows version 12, um, but under latest, if we scroll up, uh, version 14 is the latest version there. Uh, but you can uh, change latest to 14, 13, 12, um, and pick specific versions if you need to do that um, by simply just changing latest 
to, again, 14, 13, 12, whatever uh, links. We're going to link to this database image. We're also going to make the, uh, the application dependent on the database, which means that the database will need to be up and running uh, before the, the application database actually, or the application actually starts. Uh, below that, we've got some ports. Those are standard ports for this application. And then below that, we've got volumes as far as uh, where things will be stored on our server. So all we need to do is go over here, <clears throat> click on raw, <clears throat> excuse me, copy that, uh, and then come back over to Portainer and paste that into here. Uh, like you can see, I've already done. Uh, now, of course, uh, doing some testing previous to this, getting ready for this video, uh, I've actually already pulled uh, the images for uh, for Odoo or Udu or whatever, as well as the database image. So when I click deploy, this is gonna go very, very quickly. Uh, you will have to pull uh, the database is 200 megs and uh, the, the uh, application image uh, in this case is 1.4 gigs. So just know that you're gonna have to download a couple of gigs of information in order to get uh, this container up and running. So if we come back over to my portainer, uh, we can see that uh, all of this is already in here. So what I'm gonna do is just uh, click the blue button that says uh, update, yours will say deploy. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. It's gonna think about it here in the background a bit while it deploys these two containers. So there we go, everything's up and running at this point. Uh, so what I'm actually gonna do is uh, right click, I'm gonna close uh, the other tabs. Uh, we're good to go there. What I wanna do here uh, is take a look at some logs uh, here it's uh, doing some stuff in the background, it looks like. Uh, let's take a look at the database. Uh, database is ready to accept connections. Uh, so that should be good to go there. Um, so let's open this up. So here we are on the installation page. Now by default, uh, with the setup that was there, there was no root password for the database. So they've actually gone ahead uh, and uh, or, uh, added this to the database manager uh, because it wasn't currently protected. So they've actually gone ahead and made sure that your system is as protected as they can make it. So uh, this uh, password that they've given you here is actually uh, right there. They've, they've put that in by default. You can change that if you want, um, but just know that they've already pre-filled that for you for some security here. Now the database name, what we need to do is come back to Portainer um, and find our, our name of our database here. So I'm just gonna copy this like so, and I'm gonna put that in there like that, make sure there's no uh, trailing or, or leading spaces. That's all good to go. So I'll put in my email address and a password and a phone number. And then I'll select my country um, right there like so. And uh, then just to make this easier to kind of visualize, I'm gonna go ahead and import some demo data. This may take a bit to import, but at this point I can go ahead and click on create database and it's gonna think in the background. So what I'll do, I'm actually gonna come over to here. And here you can see that it's uh, doing, it's creating the database. Uh, it's going through and loading some modules, doing that sort of thing, creating and updating database tables. So we can kind of just let this hang out and do its thing. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll just put these in two uh, windows right next to each other. Uh, so we can kind of watch what's gonna happen uh, over in the left side while the right side is spinning its wheels. All right, so there we go. Um, now everything is up and running. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, minimize Portainer. I'm gonna make this full screen. Like so, and basically here are, or here is your app store uh, for the application. And you can see that a lot of these just say install um, and those are free to use. There's no charge for any of those, but some of them do require an upgrade like subscriptions or quality. Uh, what else? Uh, help desk, signing, uh, like e-signing documents. So there are some things in here that you will need to uh, pay a monthly subscription for if you want to do that. Um, so basically like, let's say you wanted to do invoicing, you can just click install. And then it will go ahead and give, uh, it'll take a couple of minutes to go ahead and download, extract, install, configure, whatever, uh, the invoicing application. Um, and then it's gonna take us to a different page that we'll see here in just a moment. Okay, so uh, now uh, it has installed that application and it's taken us to uh, an inbox here. Uh, but if we wanted to, we could come back over. Uh, we can see our invoicing application is right here up in this uh, little uh, window uh, icon that's right up here. If you click on invoicing, uh, then it will take us to a sample uh, invoice here uh, that's actually kind of neat. It says when it who it is, when it was invoiced, when it's due, uh, next things to do to follow up, that kind of thing. Uh, taxes or uh, total without tax, total with tax, 
lots of great information in here. Um, so if you wanted to go back and add more uh, applications to build out your ERP here, uh, you can click apps again. It'll bring you right back here. Again, that's up in the top left corner uh, where you've got all of this stuff. Um, so that's how you can add more apps. If we go into settings, uh, <clears throat> you can look at general settings. Uh, you can change your, uh, your company info. You can invite new users change languages, uh, basically all of your, your general settings for your company, your business, whatever, will be in here. Now, as far as your individual, like uh, your login information, uh, your, your account information will be right up here. You'll go to preferences, and then you can uh, change your, your image here if you wanted to do that. Uh, let's just go ahead and do that. Uh, you could change your email address, uh, where you're located, uh, let's see, let's go, uh, America, a little more, a little more, a little more. There it is. Uh, close enough. Um, and so you can change all of that. You can change your email signature, things like that. Click save. Um, of course it still says Mitchell admin up there. I need to change that, but uh, you kind of get the idea of how to, uh, update your personal information. Again, you can update, uh, your, uh, your company information by going to uh, general settings. Let's go ahead and click save up there. Uh, users and companies uh, are up here. General settings are up here. Uh, what else do we have? Apps, invoicing, uh, discuss, uh, where you can, I guess, send messages back and forth. So that, that basically covers all of the installation stuff uh, as far as a local installation is concerned. Uh, the other thing that you may want to consider doing is making this available uh, to the internet. Uh, if, if you wanted to do invoicing for your clients, things like that, of course, they'll need access to that. So let's take a look at what it'll take to make this available to the internet. Okay, so to make this available to the internet, you're gonna need a couple of things. The first being a domain name, uh, the second being a proxy or a reverse proxy. Uh, I'm going to use uh, my domain name that I picked up at Porkbun that I'm running through Cloudflare. Cloudflare will handle all of uh, my DNS as well as a front-facing SSL or an internet-facing SSL. And then of course, we're also going to use Nginx Proxy Manager uh, to handle the routing across my network. Uh, so the first thing we need to do uh, is set up uh, a record for uh, for our domain name, I'm actually going to use a subdomain, uh, but I want it to point to the same IP address as uh, my, my root domain here. So what I'll do, come down, click on a record, but I'm going to switch this to C name. I'm going to call this ERP and I'll do at just like that. And then I'm going to uh, switch that to DNS only. And I'm going to copy this like so, and I'll click save. And now I have this C name record set up in Cloudflare, my DNS manager. So the next thing I want to do is come up here to uh, my, my proxy or my verse proxy, Nginx proxy manager. I'm going to add a proxy host. I'm going to put in that domain name like so. And I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to change this to 192.168.68.137. And the port is 8069, like so. Uh, I'm going to block common exploits, my SSL. I'm going to request a new one. Uh, I'm going to check these first two options. Uh, and then I'll agree to the terms and click save. Okay, so here we are. We can see that uh, erp.dbtech.xyz uh, seems to be up and running. So let's go ahead and click on that and see what happens here. Okay, <laughs> so uh, this is good. This tells us that we're, we're, we're basically where we want to be. Uh, what we want to do, though, is actually come back uh, over to here and uh, click. Oops, <laughs> don't click there. Click over here. Click edit. Uh, we want to actually come back over to SSL and force both of those and click save. And then what we want to do is come back over uh, to this and to Cloudflare and change DNS to proxied and click save. Uh, and then uh, let's go ahead and uh, just go ahead and refresh that page. There we go. Now we've got uh, our, our security, our padlock up there. And I should be able to... Just like that, get logged in. So now we have our, our Odoo or Udoo or Odoo or what, however that's pronounced, available to the internet so that you can then uh, invite uh, customers or other teammates to collaborate online, uh, even if they're not in the office. So there you go, guys. There is how to set up uh, Odoo or Odoo, wh whatever. Here's how to set up this application, this ERP, so that you can have your own custom business management solution uh, on your home server, uh, ready to go in Docker. Uh, the process of setting it up is actually pretty easy. Uh, hopefully you, you found that to be true uh, via this video. Uh, if you found the video helpful, do me a favor, give the video a thumbs up really would help me out quite a bit. Uh, also, I've noticed, and I hate to even bring this up, but I've noticed that about uh, two thirds of my viewers are not subscribers. So if you find my content helpful, 
helpful uh, and want to uh, help me out in return, uh, if you could just hit the subscribe button, that would be amazing. Also, again, like I mentioned before, all of this will be available in the description down below. Uh, I'll have links to all of this stuff so that you can uh, go through this process and set this up uh, for yourself on your own Docker server. There will also be a couple of links down there where you can support the channel uh, monetarily through either Coffee or Patreon, however you want to do that. There's also uh, channel memberships uh, that you could look at if that interests you. Of course, none of that's required. All of my content will be available to everybody uh, for as long as I can see in the future. Um, but I want to give a big shout out to my channel members, my patrons. You guys are amazing. Thank you very, very much. Uh, but with all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. As always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support. And I'll talk to you in the next video.